You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode six. And if you've ever had the situation where your teen's grades have gone down as they move up through the year groups, even though they're still putting in the same amount of effort or you just want to make sure that that doesn't happen, then stay tuned because I'm going to reveal the two behind the scenes reasons why this happens and is more common than you might think. And I can tell you it has nothing to do with the subject content getting harder. I'm Katie Jones, and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner, and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence. And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hi, VIPs. It is mid-year here in Australia, and that means semester reports and mid-year assessment results are coming through for many students and their parents. And what I'm hearing a lot right now from parents in emails and on consults is that their teen is not necessarily getting the same grades as they were in year groups before. Things seem to be kind of slipping a little bit as they've moved into another year group. Something along the lines of, okay, well, in year seven and eight, they were getting A's, but now in year nine, they're getting lots of B's and C's. Or they were always getting B's and C's up till, let's say, year 10, but they're now getting a couple of D's already in year 11. Now, this is not unusual, and I actually hear it a lot every year, but it can feel like a bit of a mystery, both to parents and students, and it can be a little bit worrying for parents and certainly disappointing and confusing for those students, because after all, they didn't suddenly just become lazy or stop paying attention in class or stop doing their homework. So we have to actually be a little bit careful here, because if this starts to happen, it can, if left unchecked, actually then lead to those things, a lack of effort or less motivation or dedication. Because after all, even if when they are trying, they aren't getting the grades they used to, then it's not surprising that eventually that can turn into those feelings of, well, what's the point of putting in all the effort? Or maybe I'm just not as good as I thought. Or the worst one that I've heard is, I'm dumb, or I must just not be smart enough. Like their smartness was only at a year eight or year nine level of smartness. They aren't smart enough for those tougher subjects or high level courses. And this is not the case. And of course, we want to make sure that that negative spiral does not happen. So I want to share with you in this episode, the two main reasons, the two things that most likely are happening. If you find that your teen's grades are dropping as they have moved into a higher year group, even if their effort levels are staying the same. Now, number one is that what got students great grades in lower year groups is not the same as what is required as they move further up. In other words, what got them here won't get them there. For example, often in years seven and eight, students will get extra marks, they'll get extra credit, they'll get those smiley faces for going over and above what is asked of them. So adding extra information in a project is going to get them those bonus effort grades or those red pen smiley faces and gold stars or house points or positive feedback comments. Whereas when students get into those senior years, I am constantly coaching them on how to only give what the exam question or the essay title is asking for or looking for. The marking criteria become much more strict and there are no smiley faces for the extra things that weren't actually asked for. In fact, it is more likely that that will have a comment of, oh, you've gone off track here. <laughs> Going beyond the specific scope of a question or task will not earn them any credit as they get up into those higher year groups. And actually, like I just mentioned, it could be detrimental. For example, it could mean that they don't actually have a sustained argument in an essay if they start bringing in other things that they don't need to. Or it could simply be that they're using up their word count or exam time on things that actually needed to be allocated elsewhere. But the more subtle and super important reason 
that this can happen, that their grades can drop as they go up through the year levels, is the change in the cognitions of the tasks or the assignments and the exam questions that they're being set. It is rarely that they just can't understand or they just don't get the content that is being taught. So if we take that example of that year seven or eight project, very likely they were having to, in those projects, describe and explain information. Perhaps they were writing a book review and they had to explain what made it a good book or they're explaining how a character changed or what that character taught us in a lesson about life. Or maybe for history, they had to describe a period in history, what the people wore, what jobs they did, who the rulers were, how society was organized. And all of that is descriptive information. And in science, maybe they're describing and explaining something like tectonic processes or stating the different types of forces or the characteristics of different elements. But as we move up the year groups, the requirements of assessment tasks and exam questions and even textbook and homework questions are moving up the cognitions. And what I mean by that is they're going up through the levels of Bloom's taxonomy and they require more advanced levels of cognitive ability. So I'll explain what I mean by that. So instead of just describing and explaining, as students progress, the expectation is that they will operate at those higher levels of cognition. So instead of just describing and explaining, they'll be able to apply and analyze and evaluate and create. And I train students in this as command words and those levels of different commands. So command words go from state or define or describe at the bottom level, most frequently found in year seven and eight or in just basic concepts in preparation for learning more advanced concepts in those higher year groups. And then they move up through explain or account for up to analyze and compare and contrast. And then at the top, those extended response and essay level commands like to what extent. And this change in commands and the levels of them is a very structured system that the people who write the curriculum and textbooks, teachers who are writing assessments, the examiners who write exams, all use and follow and refer to and structure those questions around. However, the problem is that students are very rarely ever told explicitly that this is what is happening. And even less likely are they to have it explained to them or be trained in all of this in detail so that they actually know how to do it, how to operate and produce work at these higher levels. Now, some students are told about these changes. So some exam boards might call them um, cognitive verbs or directives or task verbs, but they still aren't totally sure of how to really respond differently, how to change and up level their responses, which is why it's one of the biggest things that I love to train students in explicitly, because it's kind of subtly dripped in for students, or they're just kind of expected to get it and up level themselves and their answers as they go. But it is very rarely properly taught and explained to students, because it's kind of just subtly dripped in for students, or they're just kind of expected to get it and up level themselves and their answers as they go, which is why it's one of the biggest things that I love to train students in explicitly. And this is also one of the reasons why I say my 10 week grade transformation program is aimed at students in years nine upwards, because it's often enough to produce work at those low level describe and explain levels in year seven and eight. And to some extent, also in year nine, you'd probably be able to get like a C grade with just that sort of level of information. But as students move into year 10 and those senior years, they are expected even if they're not actually told, which is why I've made it my job to tell and explain this to students, they are actually expected to be providing responses and undertaking investigations and inquiries and writing their reports at those analysis, application and evaluation levels. So that's why they might get the feedback of things like that good old add more detail, but writing more facts or descriptive level information will not work. More detail means moving up those cognitions, up the levels of Bloom's taxonomy. It does not mean tell me more facts. And things like a beautiful front cover or slide design 
could maybe be part of the quality of the delivery or having an engaging presentation if that is a part of a marking guide, but it will be a tiny part in relation to the actual content and the significant differences in the levels of response at those higher year levels. Whereas it might have been classed as making a great first impression and showing that they've put in lots of effort in those lower year levels. And a really significant change that I see happening from years eight to nine specifically, and definitely into year 10, is the requirement to analyze. Students need to move from explaining to analyzing. And the difference between those two commands is so much bigger and more significant than many students and parents realize. And as I've mentioned in a previous episode, if your teen isn't totally clear on the difference between those two commands, explain and analyze, then just getting that into place will make a huge difference to their results. So I like to simplify it to there being two steps in an explanation. They need to be linking two things together like a cause and effect. And there are three steps for analysis. They need to state the evidence, they need to explain it, and then they need to give the impact. So for example, let's look at a real life way that this would happen. If they were studying a novel and they had to write maybe an analytical essay, they would have to be stating the quote as their example or their evidence. They have to explain how or why it was being used. Maybe it was a specific technique or some specific language or vocabulary that was chosen. And then what is the impact of that technique or those words that were chosen on the audience? The impact. How does it make them think or feel in relation to the, whatever the topic of the question was? A particular character or a particular theme? Or with data, so it's totally at the end of the scale, stating the statistic would be the evidence. Then they have to explain how or why it would have occurred. So what the relationship is or what is the scientific theory? And then what is the impact of that result on their conclusion? So how does it prove or disprove their original hypothesis? So hopefully you can start to see how these three steps can be applied in any subject for analysis at any level. And another significant change is when we move into those senior years. So ATAR in Australia, A-levels in the UK, the IB diploma, where there will be a lot more questions and assessments that are leveled at the evaluate level. And in fact, I will actually say as an aside, if your teen ever has to come up with their own inquiry question or idea for an investigation, which really happens a lot these days with coursework and internal assessments, I actually encourage high achieving students to pitch their questions, to word these, their questions at this level. So they're giving themselves access to the highest levels of marking criteria. Now, that really could be a whole other podcast episode in itself. So what I'll say here about Evaluate is simply that evaluation is where questions are starting with wording like to what extent, or they might give a statement and then finish with, do you agree? They require a judgment and they require analysis in order to make that judgment. So like I said, I'll probably go into these specific levels of commands in more detail on a future podcast, but hopefully you can see why this is a big level up for students, how their responses really do need to take account of these changes in the wording of questions and how it's possible that many students and parents don't necessarily realize that this is what is happening. So if you would like to learn more about this, get lots more insights into how your team can up-level their performance in exams and assessments, then from the 18th to the 22nd of July coming up, I'm going to be hosting a five-day Facebook group for parents of teens aiming high in exams, where I'll be sharing for free some of my very best and most effective techniques and proven strategies each day from Monday through to Friday. So if you want to be in on that, then make sure you're on my email list so you get your invite. You can just sign up for the free parent guide on the website, www.rocksolidstudy.com, if you are not yet on my email list, and then you'll be added to my list. And of course, you'll receive the free guide as well, which will be a great place to start with all of this. And through the five days, as well as other critical skills and concepts, I will explain what these command levels are, how they all fit together, what they look like with real life questions from exams and textbooks, because I want you and your team to know that if this is happening or has happened, or you just want to prevent it from happening, I want you to know 
that it is not that they've just gradually gotten worse at study or at science or they've just stopped being good at history or that they have even just stopped concentrating or working as hard along the way. There are other factors and subtle but significant changes and expectations that are at play here. The changes in those expectations, and those are really shown through the marking criteria and the wording of questions, so those differences in levels of cognitive ability that are required are really important, but they're not always easy to be aware of when the usual focus is more on the subject knowledge and the content. So if your teen's in this position and they haven't yet found a way to get back to where they were, or they're trying to do it by studying in a way that's just not sustainable, they're working and studying harder and later each night, then the good news is, is that it is likely not that they need to be learning more and more subject content. They more likely need to master mark schemes. They need to truly understand what is required and how the different levels of commands, not just knowing what they are, but all importantly, how, there's that how again, how to identify them in any question and then how to actually respond to them. That is what will make a huge difference. And you will be surprised at how quickly things turn around, get back on track to those previous grades and most likely even beyond their previous levels of performance that they once were at once they have those skills in place. And these are skills that can be learned. So if you would like your teen to be trained in this and much more, then go check out and enroll them in the 10 week grade transformation program. And if you'd like to learn more yourself about what goes on behind the scenes with all of this, then look out for your invite to my five day free parent event. It's called Parents of Teens Aiming High in Exams. It will run in a private Facebook group from the 18th to the 22nd of July. Now, don't worry if you're not on Facebook. We are also going to have a private web page where we'll put all the recordings from each day's sessions as well. So you can definitely still get in on this. So I hope to see you at that event soon. And if you have felt like anything that we have talked about today on the podcast is something that you have experienced with your teen, I would love to hear about it. I would love to hear what you think about the two points that I've covered today. Email us at support at rocksolidstudy.com. And I will see you back here on the podcast again next week. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you head on over to www.rocksolidstudy.com and sign up for my free parent guide. The three huge mistakes even smart students make in exams and assignments and how to fix them immediately. And I'll see you back here next week. Bye.